So let's talk a little bit more about some different instance methods. So let's, let's say I have a student who takes a course and I want to update their credits and their grade points. So I can have a function add course with average and I'll make the average a double. So I'm going to assume for a couple of things here. One is that each course is worth one credit and the average is going to be a double. Like if I get an A, I'll get 4.0. A B would be a 3.0. Or I could get a B plus at 3.7. So I know that if I've added the course, I know I need to update my credits. So credits plus equals one, which is the short way of adding credits. And grade points plus equals whatever the average was. So it updates my grade points and my credits. But you notice I'm getting an error here. And it says left side of mutating operator isn't mutable. And by definition, I'm not supposed to change the value of these properties, even though I said var, uh, if I'm in the structure. So if I'm creating a function that's going to change the value of these properties, I have to add the keyword mutating to it. Mutating means I'm going to change some one or more of the prop of the instance variables of that structure. So in this case, in greeting, I was just printing something out. In this case, I'm actually updating the value of these variables. So I use the keyword mutating. So now I'm, I'm able to add a credit. So let's go ahead and let's do student two add course with average and I'll say 3.7. And then I can do print student to whoops student to dot credits. So if I did this right, this should say 10 and this should say uh, 11. When I ran it, it looks like um, student two credits was updated. It started as 10 and then it increased to 11. So it looks like things are working correctly. So I've got credits and grade points and name and grade, but one thing I don't have is GPA. And I could create a function that calculates the GPA, and then I have to call that function calculate GPA each time I wanted the GPA. Swift data types have this really neat property called computed properties, and it's actually a property whose value is computed when it is called. So for example, these are all considered properties of a student. I can have a property GPA. So I'll do var GPA. And it is of type double. But I'm going to add curly braces this time. And the curly braces indicate that I'm making a computed property. So all I want to do is I want to return the grade points divided by the credits. And since I want to make the credits a double, I need to actually make this a double. So this is what's called a computed property. If I access GPA, it's going to do this calculation and return that value on demand. So if I do print student2.gpa and run that, I get the calculated GPA. If I wanted to do it before I added the course, I could do print student2.gpa and it was 3.3 .3 before. I got a little bit higher grade and it goes up to 3.33. So the GPA again is calculated as I call that property, which is a neat feature. The last topic we're going to talk about today in regard to structures is something called property observers. And property observers are code that you can write that will have some logic written when a property or instance variable is changed. And we're going to do that uh, in the case of a credit is changed. We're going to check to see if a student can graduate. So we're going to go up here and we are going to, again, we're going up to our instance variable of credits 
and we're going to add our curly braces, which is going to indicate some code is going to be run. So we are going to have the, there's two parts to a property observer. There's will set, and will set means the property is about to be changed. And we'll put a brace in, and we'll put print name currently has um, credits. Forget the parentheses. We'll end the parentheses, and then that. So as the property is being changed, the will set will be called and will let us know how many credits the person currently has. Then we'll have a did set, which is run after the property has been changed, or after credits has been updated. And we'll print uh, name now has credits. Let me put that in there. Let me go up and add that to this too so it actually reads a little bit better. Then I'm going to add some logic to this. If credits is greater than or equal to 12, and again I know that's not a realistic graduation requirement, we'll put a print name can graduate. Okay, so let's go ahead and test this to see how this is going to work. So when I run this, let's go ahead and run this again. Notice I've changing, once I add the course, that's going to update the credits. So let's see if that message changes any. So you can see that when I, I ran this add course with average, when that was changed, the will set was called and it shows the current number of credits. And then did set was called with Sally now has 11 credits. So both will set and did set were, were called. This gives you the previous value. This gives you the value after it has been changed. So let's go ahead and test um, another as, so student two, add course with average, we'll say a 4.0. And again, this should, should put us over the top of being able to graduate. So let's run that. And you could see Sally currently has 11, Sally now has 12, and then it runs that logic and finds that Sally can graduate. So you don't have to use them in all of your structures, but property observers can be a handy tool. So that was a lot of information, and structures, again, is just one way to model data. In the next video, we'll take a look at another way, which are classes, and then the topic of inheritance within classes.